Hi, boys and girls. You can look around and see, you know exactly where we are. We're in, the, in our nature spot at school. And uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the nature spot, but more, uh, more importantly, I wanted to introduce you to a very special friend of mine. Uh, 10 or 11, maybe even 12 years ago, where we're sitting right now was a parking lot. And the school, uh, the school agreed that we needed a place to attract nature and for children to get out in nature not too far away from the school. So we, uh, I had heard of a friend that, actually she wasn't a friend then, she was just someone I'd heard all about at, from our garden club of Houston, that um, my friend Doris Heard here had uh, made a nature uh, habitat area around a big pond in Friendswood. And of course, Friendswood's a little bit out in the country, but I thought she's the one that we need to talk to and get advice from on building our own nature spot. And sure enough, she's been she's been my teacher. She's been uh, she's helped plan. She works on. She's tireless helper and worker, and keeping our nature spot pretty and uh, and and a place where nature will thrive. The nature spot, of course, as you know, is a habitat garden, and it's uh, uh, mostly native plants in here, plants that have been around for thousands and thousands of years that attract the wildlife, the butterflies, the bees, the birds, uh, all of nature, the amphibians, little mammals, that we are trying to gather close to us in, uh, it, here in the city. And so you might say, well, what is, what's the big deal? What's a native plant? Well, many of the plants that you see in our yards and gardens and uh, build, around buildings in the city are really ornamental plants. And people have gone out to a nursery and just said, well, I really think that plant is pretty. We'll plant it there, you know, in a spot. And that's fine, except it's not a native plant. It's come from, uh, probably come from many other countries and brought over here. Uh, and sold for our gardens too. But those are not the plants that attract the wildlife that have been here for, for thousands and thousands of years. Um, so every plant that we have in our nature spot, just about every plant has been planted for a special reason. And that reason, uh, and that reason is to attract and sustain, have homes and food and shelter and nesting and hiding places for wildlife. And um, you know, I think we, we've talked about host plants and nectar plants. Uh, this is the uh, this is the milkweed, and probably the most the most famous, if you will. All of us know about the milkweed being the host plant for the monarch butterflies, and those are our favorite of all, probably. But uh, this, this plant, particular plant, we've got them all over the, the uh, nature spot, but this plant, as you can see, has been completely eaten, all of the leaves. And you may think, well, let's get rid of that pest that's eating the leaves, but no. That's the whole point of a host plant. The, the mother monarch will only lay her eggs on the leaves of the milkweed and because that's the only plant that her baby cat that her baby caterpillars the baby monarchs will eat and they will strip completely strip the leaves off of all of uh, of the milkweeds around and then all of a sudden you start seeing little chrysalises and uh, you start seeing monarch butterflies around so that's one of our uh, host plants in the nature spot this right here is called the dutchman's pipe and it's the whole uh, the host plant for the pipe vine uh, swallowtail, and you know the swallowtails are those big, usually black, but black and white butterflies with the long tails in the back. Baby, baby uh, swallowtails will only pipe vine swallowtails will only eat the leaves on this plant. So that's another host plant. Um, another host plant is over here. Oh yes, this is, and this one, this one you know well. This is the, um, the uh, passion flower vine. And you know the fabulous passion flower. We all love to look at those. And, but these vines, these, these leaves, are the only leaves that the um, Gulf fritillary butterfly, and that's the most common butterfly in our, in our nature spot, 
that's the most common one, and the Gulf Fritillary is, that's the host plant for the Gulf Fritillary. This little cassia tree that you see, and we've got several around that have just kind of volunteered and come up, but it is wonderful. I know you remember in the fall, it's just covered with beautiful, beautiful yellow flowers, and it's the host plant for the sulfur butterfly, that beautiful yellow butterfly. And uh, the caterpillars are so interesting. We love to see them. And uh, the cassia, a great host plant. Another host plant over here is the uh, citrus tree, the uh, Satsuma orange tree. And many of you have eaten our, uh, uh, eaten our oranges in the, in the spring when we harvest them. And this Satsuma orange citrus tree is a uh, wonderful host plant for the uh, giant swallowtail. And uh, once again, those beautiful butterflies with the uh, tails at the end. Over here, we have a wonderful Texas native tree. This is the Mexican plum. And the Mexican plum is the host plant, the leaves are the host plant for the, uh, uh, for the uh, giant uh, tiger, swall tiger swallowtail. And um, it's also, we love, uh, the birds love to eat the fruit of the little plums. You could make jams or jellies, but we save them for the birds. Boys and girls, we're looking so forward to the fall. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of plants that'll be blooming that aren't even blooming now. And uh, we know the fall is some of our favorite times in the nature spot. But you're gonna get a little sneak preview today. The maintenance men are making us kind of an outdoor classroom for the fall. And I was so surprised when I came in last week and saw it. For years, I've wished they would make little stairs coming down from our classroom on down here, but that's the way it's gonna be. And we'll have a great time using the uh, using this area uh, to social distance and have a good time learning about all kinds of things. So, we'll talk later.